Hi, everyone. So I wanted to come on today to talk about the latest study that came out. This was just published on June 20th. So for some of you, you might have heard me talking about Dr. Lisa Moscone. So she wrote the book called Menopause Brain, and she was the lead author in this study. And um, I want to go over some of the key principles of the study, because this really is fundamental in our understanding of estrogen and how it works in the brain. So what they did is they looked at estrogen receptors in the brain. They basically um, infiltrated women that were before menopause, perimenopause, and menopause, and they gave them a marker that was then uptaked in the brain so that they could see the areas where there were estrogen receptors. And then they correlated this with the symptoms women have. Because as we all know, we know that we get brain fog, we know we get memory loss as we go through menopause, but there's been nothing previously to document this. And as to date, the only um, indication for menopausal therapy is vasomotor symptoms, which is hot flashes. So this study is really going to open the gateway for how we can treat menopause. So I want to show you first the regions of the brain that were lit up in the study. So if you look here, this is the brain before menopause when they injected the little tracer. And this is the brain after menopause. And so you can see that the color changes. There's areas where you see a lot more red and a lot more yellow. So this is a change in the brain in the estrogen receptor activity. And if you look at it, we see it mostly in the pituitary, an area called the posterior cingulate. And also we're seeing it in the middle of the brain and the inferior frontal lobes. So real changes within the brain with menopause. So let's go down. So what does this really mean? So what was very interesting? So I want you to look at this slide with the different colors of purple. So at the bottom, we have peri versus pre, and they're grading it. Then we have post versus peri, and then post versus pre. So what are we seeing here? So basically, between premenopause and postmenopause, you can see the darker areas. So that's the greatest change in the estrogen receptors as women go from premenopause, so basically um, in our early, late 30s, to postmenopause when we get into our 50s. So the biggest areas that we're seeing this uptake, pituitary, posterior cingul cingulate, okay? So then how does this correlate to cognition, to our, our memory and how we feel? So I want you to look at this slide. So here we have in the bottom perimenopause and all these little dots show us the areas where there's some estrogen uptake. And we can see that be, during menopause, so perimenopause would be in the time early 40s um, into the 50s before your period stop. For some women, um, perimenopause can start in their late 30s. So we're starting to see some changes. We start to see first the vasomotor. So that's the hot flashes. That's always what we knew about. And then we start to see sleep. And this is what we knew about. And this is really exciting because we knew this, but we never until now had anything to document it. Okay. So now I want you to look at postmenopause. Look at all this blue. So this blue tells us there's a lot of estrogen receptor uptake here. Um, and where is it? It's on mood. So this is why you're feeling irritable, feeling very cranky, because there's a structural change in your brain when you go through menopause. And the other, which is really important as well. So this is cognition. This is our mental clarity, our ability to make decisions, the ability to feel like we're tr we can keep our lives together. And a lot of times women are told that you're just depressed or put up with it, but there truly are a lot of changes going on in the brain. So once again, we see perimenopause, the hot flashes and the sleep, and later menopause, we're seeing the mood changes and also the cognition. So now we have evidence, uh, ladies, when you go to see your physicians, you have evidence to say, I really feel that perhaps I would benefit from hormonal therapy because I'm having these symptoms. And more and more studies will come out, and this is just the first one that was able to document this. And the, the following studies are gonna be looking at when we give estrogen, what happens to the brain then, and maybe even other uh, treatments that we can give to help the brain, but clearly we know that there's changes. And the other really important thing to know here is that the thing that we see post-menopause as well 
is we can see this worry about dementia and Alzheimer's. And remember, two out of three cases of dementia are in women. And we're seeing now why, because of these changes um, in this cognitive center, in this memory area within the brain. So I hope this is helpful, and I'm going to share a link below to this full interview with Dr. Moscone and Dr. Mary Claire Haver, so you can get a better understanding of what's going on. So we're going to go to the interview now with Dr. Moscone and Dr. Mary Claire Haver. This is just an excerpt. After menopause, women live long, mm -hmm. much longer than that. So we were looking, in other words, we were looking at regions that may show compensation or adaptation. And <laughs> to be super honest, when we started looking at this, we were trying to replicate the models that we had for menopause. And traditionally, historically, people have been saying what's going to happen is that estrogen is to bind to the receptors, and then it's the binding that leads to neuroplasticity and blood flow mm -hmm. and energy, all the beautiful things that estrogen can do for you. So what we want to measure is both estrogen and the receptors. And what scientists were saying was that soon after menopause, the estrogen receptors will shut down. It used Usually the idea was more or less six years. Six years mm -hmm. after the final menstrual period, most estrogen receptors in mice are gone. Mm -hmm. So it makes no sense to give hormones. Right, because there's nothing to bind to in the brain. But the right. Hormones. So we were thinking that what we will find was a lot of receptors before menopause and no receptors after and instead, we found exactly the opposite. We find, that, and I kept going to my students. I was like, no, 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 no. Do this again, do this again. We're doing something wrong. We're doing something wrong. We need more, more people in the study. Maybe there's an outlier, you know, you never know. But the more women we were bringing into the study, the clearer it was to us. And no, this is actually true signal. And we tried, I, I assure you, we did every possible model under the sun. The amount of equation modeling that we had to figure out with this study is five years of my life. Five years. So what we find is that in brain regions that are known to have to contain estrogen receptors, the signal increases from the premenopausal to the perimenopausal to the postmenopausal stage. And in that picture you showed at the beginning, I think it's quite clear that there's one part of the brain in particular, and you and I talked about this, is mm -hmm. the brain it's really looks like a supernova. Mm -hmm. It's a massive amount of uptake. And that's the brain region that is in charge of telling the ovaries to make more estrogen. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the estrogen receptors are upregulated or overexpressed after menopause, suggests that the brain is like, give me Me estrogen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the way we interpret that is, and also we find the same trend in every part of the brain that we looked at. We use different methods. We did regions of interest where we looked at each region one by one, but we also did three-dimensional mo modeling and statistical parametric maps to look at everywhere in the brain. And so we found that there are some parts of women's brains that contain estrogen receptors that were not previously found in mice, right? So our, our brains have even more receptors than other animals, perhaps, but this is an indication that that may be the case. And I think it's really fascinating. So that's the first thing we've found. And everywhere in the brain, we find the same trend, pre, peri, post, mm -hmm. pre, peri, post. There are some regions where the, the jump is over 30%, like the mm -hmm. two. Other regions where it's more like 15, 20%, like the hypothalamus, right? The hypothalamus is right. for hormone production, and they're going to dotropin release and for regulation of body temperature, the half flashes and whatnot. So that makes sense. So the another bit really makes sense. And then what we found is that, you know how blood tests are a little tricky? Mm -hmm. 
Do you, mm. do you, do you want to talk about that? It's more. Um, so in perimenopause, and I've, I've told my followers this before, but we're going to echo what's going on. In perimenopause, we are reaching a critical threshold of the number and quality of our egg supply, where the signals from the brain, so our hypothalamus is constantly testing our blood for estradiol, looking for estrogen. And when it senses that the levels are low, like in a normal monthly cycle in premenopause, it sends this GnRH gets sent from the hypothalamus to the pituitary, pituitary then sends the stimulating hormones down to the ovaries so that you ovulate and the estrogen levels come back up. Very simplistic view. Mm -hmm. When those, when that egg supply gets low, the brain sends the signals and nothing happens. And then the hypothalamus goes, wait, I need estrogen. It's not high enough yet. And so it sends a bigger boost of stimulating hormones. You know, the, the pituitary will then send much larger levels of FSH and LH in order to get that egg out, which is just harder because of aging and loss of eggs. We become more resistant in perimenopause. So you get this kind of chaotic, what used to look like an EKG every month, you know, in a normal, healthy, ovulating woman now is a very chaotic LHH is floating, and then you finally get estradiol late in the cycle, and it's much higher than it ever was in a normal cycle. So it is not a predictable thing anymore. It is very unpredictable, and that leads to this crazy range of symptoms that we go through, including what's happening in the brain, and the brain likes uniformity. And when we become chaotic, our serotonin, dopamine, all of our neurotransmitter levels start going crazy too, and that's where we see, well, you can talk more about the cognition, but you know, the studies coming out on the mental health, you know, due to the neurotransmitters changing is really from the chaos, less so in postmenopause, but really in perimenopause. So when we go to do a blood test to say, are you perimenopausal? Who knows? Because the chaos, <laughs> we don't have a predictable way to define perimenopause with blood work. But also, I think also the problem for us as scientists, at least, is that even after menopause, uh, at least at the early stages of menopause, you never know, right? Once you do it, yeah. <laughs> if you get the premenopausal woman at the wrong time of the cycle, they're kind of similar. It's just not a good way to predict the mm -hmm. symptoms for estrogen levels in blood do not correlate, at least with the brain symptoms of menopause. Mm -hmm. The thing that estrogen concentrations in the brain are partially independent from estrogen concentrations in blood, which is very important because, like you said, otherwise, every two weeks, we will lose our minds, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's very important for the brain to try and maintain a more stable mm -hmm. estrogen, which the brain does by making its own estradiol, mm -hmm. Right, so the aromatase enzyme is quite active in women's brains throughout their entire lives. It goes down after menopause, but it remains active. And then it, the brain can convert testosterone, for instance, into estradiol, prone to estradiol, you know, pre, um, progesterone to estradiol. So what we're seeing is that overall, all of these activates these estrogen receptors, right? The estrogen receptors are there, they want the estrogen, no matter if it's your ovaries making it, if it's the brain making it, if it's fat tissue making it, the estrogen receptors are there and very happy. If you measure them, we get 100% separation between women in postmenopause, the women who have a, have a menstrual cycle, whether regular or irregular, which I think is really helpful. It may help, be helpful clinically once we understand it a little bit better. But the thing that was really, Exciting to me is that the estrogen signal in the brain predicts some of the symptoms of menopause, and specifically the brain fog presence, the brain fog and presence of low mood, tearfulness, irritability, the mood dumps, right? The doom dumps, the women. Mm -hmm. So that could be a biomarker that we can use in menopause to predict if a woman is going to have those symptoms or not. And in part, it also tells us that estrogen therapy might be a good way to alleviate the brain fog as well. It's not approved yet, it's not that right. But I think this 
this gives us reason to believe that at least we need to do more research to really mm -hmm. get therapy for that. And also really correlates with cognition. There is estrogen receptor density in the hippocampus, which is the memory center, one of the memory centers of the brain where learning and consolidation take place, strongly predict the memory function after menopause. And those in theory, those in theory menopause. And so many women have memory issues that are mm -hmm. quite, can be quite debilitating. Right, and when you look at the data around women's performance at work and their comfort in continuing their jobs, especially women in high level positions requiring a lot of cognitive, you know, function, and they are not feeling comfortable to continue working, one out of five will leave their position. Yeah. Um, because yeah. of untreated, you know, what we're now attributing to probably untreated menopause. Yeah. And for me, as a, as a scientist, but I think you also mm -hmm. are really interested mm -hmm. Clinicians, the, the menopause is for sure. Is <laughs> okay. Um, we can do more, we can do better. And the fact that estrogen is what's driving some of the symptoms of menopause, the cognitive changes during that was completely speculative until today, mm -hmm. right? But people found in animals, and again, it's a different physiology, different, different. Well, it's great that we have that information, of course, but it's not exactly the same as finding that directly in women. And so it was, there was always room for interpretation and a lot of professional society would be like, well, we don't really have good evidence that A leads to B. And, and now we do. You know, <laughs> I mean, yeah. 